but I think we've got apologies from um, Andy Smith, Sam Dennis, uh, the Deputy Youth Mayor, uh, Mohammed, and the, sorry, the Youth Mayor, Mohammed, should I say, and the Deputy Youth Mayor-elect, Alicia. I've got it right, calm down, John. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, um, any late items? I've got no sort of late items report-wise, but we do... Uh, Yes, we have got late items report-wise. This is the um, Leveling Up Fund Award, uh, which has got um, a paper both in the main agenda and in the um, um, private agenda with our press and the public. So we'll take those um, as printed after uh, item 10. Um, what I was going to say is our um, Deputy Youth Mayor, is going to talk to us for a moment about a couple of awards the council has received. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I want to share, share some wonderful piece of evidence that demonstrate what can happen if we let our young people lead campaigns. This message is being passed on by Mohammed Muntasir, who, as you know, is the youth mayor uh, elect of 2023 to 2024. Our city took part in a young people-led campaign called the White Ribbon Campaign, that aimed at getting young men and boys to stand up against misogyny directed towards young women and girls. The campaign got into the finalist stage for the National Crime Beats Awards, where Mohammed and a group of other young people went down to London to receive. We are delighted to share that our campaign went on to win third place and receive the National High Sheriff's Association Award. And as you can see at the front chair, we have placed three trophies that accompanied the nominations. Again, we hope you can join us in congratulating such a brilliant achievement that truly highlights what we can do as the youth of Derby. Thank you, Chair. Well, I'm not sure there's more I can add. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Harmon, for that, um, and to uh, Mohammed and everybody else who's been involved in um, such a brilliant campaign on such an important issue. Uh, highlighting it, doing all the work behind the scenes uh, to be uh, promoting it and highlighting it and then going on to win um, such a prestigious award. So uh, if you would just portray our thanks uh, on behalf of the Cabinet and the whole Council uh, to everybody who's really been involved in that project. It's a fantastic achievement. So thank you very much. Okay. Um, item three, receipt of petitions. There aren't any. Um, item four, identification of urgent items which calling will not apply to. There aren't any. Uh, any declarations of interest, Cabinet? Okay, thank you. Um, somebody could move the minutes uh, of the meeting held on the 13th of March, please. Thank you, Councillor Esselbury. Seconder there, Councillor Peatfield. Thank you. Uh, so, on the matters referred, recommendations from the Exec Scrutiny Board will take them in the order that they appear on the agenda. Key decisions, first key decision at item 8 is the Derby Schools Capital Programme Priority Schemes for the Municipal Year 24-25. Councillor Whitby. Thank you very much, Chair. Yeah, um, yeah a, a routine report uh, taken to Cabinet every year uh, to approve the next round of priority uh, school building condition capital projects for maintained schools. Um, the Council have allocated their funding annually uh, by the DfE. Um, the report was put in before we knew the final uh, figure uh, because, you know, there's a bit of urgency here because we need to get these schemes uh, undertaken in, during the summer holidays, the school holidays, um, to obviously minimise any disruption to schooling. So, um, yeah, the report states, it sets out that we, that, um, we were going to have funding of 3 million, uh, breaking news, it's going to be 3.275, so we can afford all all the uh, the, uh, the schemes within the report, which is excellent news. We have a, some underspend from 23-24 as well to go with that. Uh, uh, 0.858 uh, million as well. 
So, yeah, approval is, is required now for the works, boiler replacements, uh, building fabric and <coughs> structural work, fire, replace, uh, fire risk assessment work, roofing and window replacements, uh, obviously among other things. Um, schemes are set out in more detail in Appendix 2. And obviously the Council very carefully prioritises schemes based on its detailed school condition survey reports, uh, which it completes on a rolling programme. So uh, hopefully uh, Council can approve the schemes and we can move on. Thank you, Councillor Whitby. Uh, just referring back to last night's, not sorry, Monday afternoons, um, Exec Scrutiny Board had resolved to note the report. Um, any other contributions anywhere? No? Okay. I shall move the recommendations then as printed for item 8 or 2.1 through to 2.5. Have a show of hands, all those in favour? Thank you very much. That's carried. Um, just before I move on to item nine, Symphon Golf Course, um, can I just extend a warm welcome to the, uh, the youth mayor-elect. Sam has just joined us. Welcome, Sam, to Cabinet Meeting. Okay, item nine, Symphony Golf Course uh, update and next steps, Councillor Peatfield. Thank you, Chair. Um, in July 2015, the Council leased um, Symphony Golf Course to Sheffield City Trust, and the Trust have been operating the course since that date. Um, they are now withdrawing from the golf course operations uh, nationally and they've informed us that they want to surrender the lease on or before the 31st of August 2024. Um, unfortunately, the, our council no longer has the expertise or the resources to operate the course ourselves. And so in November 2023, we engaged with HMH Golf and Leisure. They're a specialist in the marketing of golf courses. Uh, and we engaged them to market the course. The marketing exercise made it very clear uh, under our uh, guidance that the new operator would be required to provide um, a pricing scheme aligned to the market rates to ensure access for all sections of the community, offering membership uh, and per round prices. It also uh, was clear that it would need to have a programme of use that met the needs of all sections of the community um, they would need to provide high levels of customer care and an ongoing commitment to partnership working with the Derby Golf Club um, who operate from the site and who are very, very passionate about the site and have cared and nurtured that site to the best of their abilities for the last um, nine years under Sheffield City Trust. Um, final bids were received and six operators um, uh, put in bids by the closing date of 7th of April, um, which is brilliant, I, have, I might add. I think six is um, a really, really great scope to be able to choose from. Um, officers are now in the process of evaluating those bids. Um, I, I understand that the bids received all offer significant investment in the course, which is really, really important to us and its facilities, and they're offering long-term commitments to its ongoing operation as a golf course. So I want to be very, very clear to the public that there is, you know, this will continue as a golf course. Um, there's an exciting opportunity to improve the golf offer for residents at, uh, at this site. A number of bids also incorporate offers to include the cotton farm building within their operations. That's a dilapidated building that used to be a farmhouse way before there was a golf course there. Um, and it's never been invested in, gosh, in, I think, over 50 years, I would imagine. Um, so it's really exciting to understand that that could be brought back into use. It's not included within the current lease, and the building is in a very poor state of repair, including a tree growing through the middle of it. Um, there is inclusion in any future lease would, um, would be a further benefit for the council anyway. So this report, it seeks 
delegated approval for the Director of Corporate Governance, Property and Procurement in consultation with the Section 151 officer and with myself to finalise the terms of the final lease with the preferred operator. Um, by seeking Cabinet approvals now, we will have all the necessary approvals in place to allow the Council to enter into financial legal arrangements with the preferred bidder in good time ahead of the proposed surrender date for the current lease. And of course, it goes without saying that um, it happens to fall in Sinfin and Osmiston patch, and so we will be seeking the absolute best offer possible. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Peterfield. Uh, I don't think I've got anything more to add to that. Uh, great piece of work um, to get us into this position and look forward to a, uh, a vibrant and more um, used facility. Um, going forward uh, for people in and around Sinfin, Osmiston and, and the wider area. Um, any other comments, contributions? Okay, just looking at the exec scrutiny's recommendations, the exec scrutiny board resolved to welcome the proposal and recommend that the details of the new partners and lease arrangements are reported to the communities. Public Protection and Housing Scrutiny Review Board. Okay, thank you very much for all those. Councillor Khan. No, sorry, no, that's okay. Brilliant. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, okay. Chair. Can I, Chair, can I ask if that um, recommendation is approved? Um, you can ask. Absolutely. May I ask it? Okay. All right. Yes. And um, look, it's a sensible recommendation. Um, and for scrutiny boards, I'm sure this conversation is going to come up again uh, later. For, for, for scrutiny boards to set their work programmes and wanting to um, review parts of the council's work, um, I've said this before as well many times, it, it's for the scrutiny boards to determine that. Um, but I'm more than happy for um, once the... Um, um, the new partners' lease arrangements and details have been uh, announced following uh, due process uh, for that scrutiny board to have a report uh, and for that to be shared by, by members of the scrutiny board. That's absolutely um, uh, the right and proper thing to do, so more than happy to, to note those recommendations. Okay, Cabinet, so recommendation on item 9, 2.1 and 2.2. Thank you. That's carried. Put my microphone back on. Thank you, Karen. Uh, moving on to key decision at item uh, 10, uh, the proposed purchase and redevelopment of a site in Derby to provide affordable homes. Uh, just note, um, Cabinet and, and members of the public, there is a, uh, accompanying this, this report in the open agenda, there is a report uh, or a key decision to... Um, also discuss at item 13 in the confidential part of the agenda as well. So this initial debate is purely based on the, um, the, the non-confidential report. Councillor Khan. Thank you, uh, Chair. Before I start, can I just apologise? I am in absolute agony, so I have Karen with me in case I miss anything or there is any kind of misinterpretation. She will correct me uh, on this. Chair, when I first asked officers to look at this uh, site, I think it was June last year, uh, we agreed that it was a very good site, but there might be uh, issues regarding the sort of financial affordability of this. But I would like to congratulate the officers on, on their tenacity, A, in uh, their negotiations with, for the price of this purchase, and also the relentless pursuit of uh, government funding, which has made it possible to acquire this site, which ticks all the boxes. As you will know, there is an unprecedented demand for social housing in, in, in Derby, and new affordable homes is a council priority. We are having to house families in, in bed and breakfast accommodation, which doesn't provide them with a satisfactory uh, living accommodation or living environment. Uh, and it quite often divides families into different houses and in 
it affects their mental and physical well-being. This site has been identified where uh, 46 flats could be quickly brought in to help us alleviate the use of bed and breakfast. It can then be remodeled over a slightly longer period to provide a total of 96 homes. The report before you seeks approval to add this project uh, for the purpose and development of this site into a capital program. The new homes will be managed and maintained by Derby Homes as part of the council's housing stock. <coughs> by moving families into self-contained accommodation, we will improve their circumstances, as I stated, both physically and mentally, uh, and it will provide a saving to the council from having to pay bed and breakfast fees. We have been offered a grant from the central government uh, department of leveling up to help support the purchase and bring the first 46 flats into use. We explored other options uh, to this site, but nothing was available that could be brought into use as quickly and would meet the delivery time scale required by the central government funding we have been allocated. The added benefit is that because the property is existing, it would be upgraded, it has a lower carbon impact and is a positive reuse of a existing building. Officers are still exploring whether the property should be held within the housing revenue account or the general fund, but this is a complex decision and has many interrelating factors, including further information from the Department of Leveling Up in relation to their precise grant conditions. Uh, there is some advice that we need to uh, bring forward orally and I, I will ask Karen to uh, just to uh, relay that to you. Yes, so it's um, the recommendation that's laid out in paragraphs 2.1 to 2.8. It's just to uh, orally advise Cabinet um, that the borrowing referred to in um, 2.8 um, could be subject to change, um, for, subject to further confirmation from our legal advisers. Um, but we do continue to um, monitor and reappraise the project. Thank you, Karen. Uh, at this particular point, uh, Chair, that's all that I can uh, divulge. Uh, any other details will be forwarded when we have the closed session. Thank you, Ross. I've got my mic on now. Uh, any other questions from Cabinet? There's a couple of recommendations from the Exec Scrutiny Board. Councillor Fulton, did you want to speak to those? Thank you, Chair. Yes, um, briefly, they are fairly self-explanatory in that the, the Board very much welcomed this the recommendation, these proposals, but did, in the first instance, seek some reassurance that, wherever possible, children with families, uh, as referred to probably in bed and breakfast, uh, are prioritised for allocation of this new accommodation because, clearly, um, the, what, what we have to do with emergency housing at the moment is, is unacceptable and this should go some, some way towards it. But a reassurance is sought that um, children, families with children are prior, prioritised. The second re recommendation came out around general discussion around the problems with social housing and it cropped up, it came up that um, uh, clearly there's a lot of pressure on social housing, a lot of pressure on the on the Home Finder, uh, Derby Homes fi Home Finder um, scheme. Um, but it also became apparent that there are a number of allocations uh, that don't hit the Home Finder uh, system. They are, there are a number of scenarios and, and priorities that can be given to allocating um, emergency housing and, and housing in general uh, that don't, that mean it doesn't meet, meet the home finder um, process, which is, which people on that process are realizing and, and struggling to understand. 
as an example, we, we were able to get some numbers of the 501 properties that came for, for allocate, allocation, 140 were never offered on, on Home Finder. So officers have agreed and we would recommend or ask that um, some further information is given in relation to the process and the, and the allocations process for Home Finder. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Poulter. Um, and I appreciate those um, concerns and recommendations from exec scrutiny. I'll bring back uh, Councillor Corn in a second. But I would have thought we'll apply our um, allocations policy in full to, to any allocations for um, any properties that become available for for residents of the um, of our city, and we wouldn't divert from that allocation policy for any particular scheme. I don't know whether Councillor Corn or Karen wants to come back on that. Um, just to confirm that there is uh, no uh, single bed space accommodation going to be provided um, within the development, so it is all targeted at families. Um, so um, it's it will be those families with children. Um, and in addition, we have actually, um, I've been in contact with uh, colleagues today and we are starting to compile a report to bring back to exec scrutiny and the um, other um, scrutiny board. Um, we just need confirmation of uh, what dates are available for us to uh, bring that report. Okay, and can I just confirm allocations will be done as per our allocation it policy? It will be part of, it's all part of the allocation policy, but we'll compile it into a single document rather than it being across um, various policies. Okay. All right. Th thanks for that, Chris. Uh, and I'm sure what Karen said there gives us the reassurance that allocations will be um, carefully considered and there'll be a report coming back um, to the relevant scrutiny boards uh, on that. OK, any other contributions on this item? No, nope. thank you very much. Um, OK, Cabinet, could uh, I please um, ask you to approve recommendations uh, from 2.1 through to recommendations to 2.8 on page 2. Excellent. Thank you very much for that. What have I done with my agenda now? I've got it there either. It's over here. Uh, so I'm going to move to the late item um, uh, on the levelling up fund next. Uh, there's a report here. Um, I think I've acted as a sponsor of this report due to the time at the publication Councillor Pete Field was away. Um, but I will not steal any of Councillor Pete Field's uh, thunder on this um, very exciting uh, report, which will uh, again be part of our uh, ambition to regenerate our city centre, bringing vibrancy and footfall to our city centre and also ensuring we uh, secure uh, funds allocated to the city centre and not have to return those um, to government. Councillor Peatfield. Thank you, Chair. This is an important partnership for the city working with um, Derby City Council, the University of Derby and Derby Theatre, and uh, it shows our commitment to investing in the cultural heart of the city. The proposals in this paper will utilise the 20 million levelling up funding to firstly refurbish and extend the Guildhall, our important listed building owned by the City Council, and to secondly the refurbish the existing Derby Theatre to better provide for students and the learning theatre concept delivering skills in drama, production and management, as well as providing an excellent venue for drama and live performances for Derby's residents. The Guildhall is one of the most important of Derby's buildings, which sadly has not been in use for the last five years. The restoration of the Guildhall will contribute to the city's cultural regeneration centred around the marketplace complementing the excellent work being undertaken to restore the adjacent market hall. Improving the theatre and guild hall in this way has allowed the assembly rooms to become a key part of the regeneration of Derby City Centre, 
with the new scheme there being worked up by the Council in partnership with Vinci and ION. We plan to make a start on the Guildhall in the spring of next year to be finished for Christmas 2027, when it will once again become a venue for showcasing Derby's local talent and exceptional range of amateur, community and youth groups, as well as smaller intimate productions of touring theatre, music, comedy and spoken word. So I recommend this paper um, to the Cabinet wholeheartedly and very excitedly um, and I look forward to cutting that ribbon on the Guildhall and opening it once again to the public who love it so much. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Councillor Peterfield. Uh, and um, just reiterate um, everything you said there, but particularly the thanks to uh, the team who have worked really, really hard uh, in the background over a relatively short period of time uh, and, and taking a unviable scheme uh, to a a, a viable scheme that will um, restore um, two buildings or restore one and bring them up, uh, grade another building uh, and bringing again um, another new dimension to that uh, ambition of ours of vibrancy in the city centre. Um, recommendations from exec scrutiny, I had them here a second ago, was the Executive Board resolved to uh, note the public report and to consider any recommendations to Council Cabinet, Cabinet in the confidential part of the meeting. So we'll come to those uh, later on in the agenda. Uh, Councillor Martin. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just to uh, agree wholeheartedly with what um, Councillor Peatfield has said, I think this is a very exciting development for Derby. I think it will be very welcomed by Derby people who will cherish that little theatre in the Guildhall they very much used to do. Um, I remember going there a few years ago and seeing a council pantomime there with the chief executive as a widow Twenky or something. So an opportunity for the current chief executive to, uh, to show his talents in the future. I can see a, and, um, I can see a, a recommendation but, coming on here. Uh, that could be a recommendation. And uh, many other, as I say, touring productions there. It's a fantastic venue um, that is well loved by um, amateur groups in the city and the people in the city alike. I also think the Derby Theatre is a very well respected venue and I know that for many years they've had concerns about some aspects of um, what that venue enables them to do theatrically. Um, nevertheless, um, it is a wonderful auditorium. People from right across the county and indeed the country that I know that have visited that theatre uh, are very impressed uh, with the seating, uh, with the, ha um, the acoustics, um, and with the whole layout of the theatre. And it's a modern theatre that is, is, has um, managed to reach the status of being well-liked and well-respected. And many people, including myself, have experienced sort of key moments there in their lives in these venues. Um, so it goes beyond the venue. It means a lot to a lot of people's personal history and our city's history. And therefore, I wholeheartedly support um, this report and these proposals. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Martin. OK, so... Um, oh, sorry. Councillor Poulter, um, any comments on the recommendation of your... Exec Scrooney Ward at this I, stage of the meeting. Let's might, stick to it, the recommendations. It might be most appropriate to deal with the recommendations themselves at the, in the confidential item, but there's a couple of points I need to raise because in discussion at the board, concerns were raised about the um, procedural correctness or lack of procedural correctness around bringing this as a late item, uh, a key decision, seriously key, key decision, only issue in the papers on the Friday before, without any consultation with the chair, uh, when this item has never appeared on the, um, the forward plan. So the question, first question is, um, why, was, why was this introduced as a late item uh, against normal procedure? And the second one is, why, what is it in the confidential report that 
needs to be dealt with on a confidential basis. Thank you, Councillor Volta. Um, well, um, I, I'm, I'm sure um, our monitoring officer and, and uh, our head of democratic services uh, can respond. I, I've checked this out earlier on. Um, but to be honest with you, just to instill a little bit of discipline, uh, I'm going to stick to the, the um, uh, format of this meeting, and, and I've allowed you to speak, but you should be speaking to the recommendations made by the scrutiny board uh, that you chaired on Monday. Uh, and the recommendations by, made by that scrutiny board uh, are to note the reports, but you'd like to discuss other items on the confidential um, papers, so we'll deal with those when we get to that stage. There's no recommendations on the process taken um, or, or the process being applied, which have been noted in the um, in the um, recommendations from that scrutiny board, as, as shown to me in Appendix 1 on the report. So, Cabinet, um, recommendations uh, on page 1 from 2.1 through to page 2, uh, A to H. Can I have a show of those hands for all those in favour, please? Thank you. And that's carried. Okay. That's the late item. Okay. Uh, that's the key decisions in the public agenda complete under contract and financial procedures matters. Uh, compliance with contract and financial procedure rules. I uh, will cover this part of uh, the agenda at item 11, when I get there. Okay, there are a number of recommendations through from 2.1 uh, to 2.10. Um, the first one, uh, and, and other cabinet members may want to come in on this in their portfolio areas, but the first one uh, is to approve a submission of a bid um, for a total of £344,000 from the Football Foundation to develop a play zone facility in Alveston Park, as outlined um, in section 4.1. Uh, that will be our second play zone facility following the opening of the first play zone facility in the whole country uh, earlier last month um, in, in, in Normanton Park, which was um, uh, a very, very um, positive step taken uh, to ensure there's facilities for uh, young children in a very, very deprived area. But we look forward to cracking on with work in Alverston and hopefully add other um, play zones uh, in other parts of our city from um, Abbey to Mackworth to Spondon uh, and beyond if we can. Uh, other recommendations, um, Cabinet, is the acceptance of uh, an additional uh, local stop smoking services uh, and support grant funding for 24, 25 to 28, 29. Um, and Derby City Council will receive a confirmed amount of £375,000 for 24, 25, um, with an estimated total grant value over the five years um, of £1.87 million, uh, which is yet to be concerned to confirmed and that's highlighted in section 4.2. Uh, there's also the acceptance of a uh, DLUC homelessness prevention grant for 24-25 uh, of £1.111 million, as, as outlined in section 4.3 of the report. Um, and then finally, to note the acceptance of the final uh, household fund, household support fund, should I say, for 2024, uh, for just uh, just shy of two and a quarter million pound, as highlighted in section 4.4, um, and just noting there that is the final. What we're told now is the final household support fund um, allocation for the council, and I know the cabinet member responsible 
um, has been lobbying for an extension to the household um, support fund because given where we are uh, still in the cost of living crisis and uh, 14 years of austerity uh, from the feedback we're receiving families across our city are in desperate need for the household support fund to continue uh, let's hope we see a further extension of that um, in, in due course because it's desperately needed um, any comments cabinet on any of those items under item 11 um, for compliance with contract and financial procedure matters councillor i'm going to just work my way around councillor dinzer then councillor hazelgrave thank you very much chair um just to say it's uh, really welcome that um, we've got a second play uh, support play zone uh, application with funding being made available by government and match funding for ourselves um, uh, on the back of the uh, normanton park play zone and uh, i'm hoping that more will be coming forward because we've got other consultations going on but this has been approved and um, it will make a massive difference to alverson park uh, all our parks need improvement and we've uh, ourselves allocated a budget of half a million pounds to uh, help do that. We could do with more, but that and funding like this will help us to improve the facilities for people to access active sport and facilities, particularly around football, but other, other sporting activities. So really welcome to see this um, um, acceptance of funding from the government and much funding to be found from appropriate sources, um, as we have done with the normal play zone. So it's really welcome. It'll be <coughs> contribute towards the health and activity of our um, communities, particularly um, people who are less able to join into uh, health and fitness, and to improve that. So really welcome that. Thank you, Councillor Dinzer. Councillor Hazelgrave. Yes, Cabinet, this uh, was announced, the HSF final award uh, was announced at a very late stage and we received exactly the same amount as we received for HSF 1 to the penny uh, in April 22, which means that no account has been, made, uh, been taken for inflation over that period since April 22, uh, and it reached 19.1% by March 2023 for food and energy prices. We're facing growing demand for support from this fund, which in real terms cannot go as far as it needs to. We've always run out of money before the end, of, end date of each phase. The government's gross mismanagement of the economy, the name trust comes to mind in particular, has left many working families with children unable to cover their heating bills, food bills and clothing bills leaving them with no choice but to seek help from the council and our valuable partners in the voluntary sector. Pensioners and disabled residents have also been in significant numbers in receipt of this in Derby. Frankly, it's a sticking plaster that doesn't quite stick and it's clearly time for a change of government. Thank you, Councillor Hazelgrave. Councillor Martin. Um, thank you. Just um, to say on the stop smoking support uh, funding, obviously this funding is very welcome. I'm pleased that it's coming to the local authority because we have an excellent track record through our Live Well service in providing stop smoking support. And um, no doubt this funding, which will be <coughs> is a significant amount of funding if we have it over the five years, will make quite an impact in the city um, and i think we need to bear in mind that it's quite likely that um, other sources of uh, stopping smoking support um, services in other parts of the nhs are under significant pressure in, in parts of the nhs i should say are under significant pressure because of budget funding and uh, budget pressure in the um, nhs so um, that is a shame, but we do welcome this funding here. Smoking is a choice, I believe. Um, it is a choice that people make, and that's a choice I personally would support. But on the other hand, there are many, many people who do want to stop smoking, um, and it is very, very, uh, has lots of serious health consequences. So um, this funding within the council is well situated and will have quite a 
significant impact. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Um, just moving to the recommendations. I've got them here somewhere from um, exact scrutiny. Councillor Bolter, did you want to present those? Thank you for the opportunity, Chair, but it seems like, as usual, you're not particularly interested in background to the recommendations. So they're there. I'm happy to hear your response to the recommendations, and I'm here to clarify anything, any points you wish to clarify, Chair. Thank you very much for that, Councillor Poulter. Um, but if your comment was more related to the previous item, uh, just report, re read the report. There were no recommendations. Okay. Um, Okay, we're more than happy to note the recommendations uh, if Councillor Poulter uh, decides not to elaborate on those. Um, that's absolutely fine. Uh, so, uh, yes, I've just said we'll note your recommendations. Councillor Poulter, thank you very much. Cabinet recommendations 2.1 on page 1 of item uh, 11 through to 2.10 uh, on page 2. All those in favour? Thank you very much. That's carried. Okay, that's the contract and financial procedure matters complete. Uh, sorry, uh, Harmon and Sam, both got your hands up. Um, how are the initiatives addressing the unique needs and challenges faced by young people from diverse backgrounds, um, including marginalised communities and those facing socio-economic disadvantages, to ensure access to resources and opportunities for human development? Um, sorry, Sam, I'm just a little bit confused. What, which, which, which report are you referring to? Um, item 11. Item 11. Okay, sorry. Okay, sorry. I'll just be briefed on that. Could you just repeat and just a little bit louder? Sorry. What, what um, yeah, so how are the initiatives addressing the unique needs and challenges faced by the young people from diverse backgrounds? Um, so how are you ensuring that the access to resources and opportunities for human development? Okay, sure. Uh, look, um, I think I've understood your question. Um, all, all the initiatives, either whether they're in item 11 or run by this council, we welcome contributions uh, from you know, all members of the public, particularly uh, um, our younger citizens and uh, citizens from um, diverse backgrounds. Uh, for example, I'll just give you um, the, mm, the first bullet point there, the bid to accept the funding for Alverston Park. Recently, we'd accepted the bid and delivered on the, the first play zone uh, in, 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 in the whole country at Normanton Park, and I know the design of that facility, um, the partners involved, our officers involved, consulted children from Dale Primary School, I believe it was, in, in what the offer there was, the design of that facility, and they were in attendance using that facility pretty actively, even prior to it uh, opening, but even on the day of the official opening, uh, there were children and young people uh, students from Dale Primary, along with their PE teachers, actively taking part in that uh, in that design. So I, I would, um, I don't know, categorically, but I assume uh, and reliably say it will definitely happen uh, in Alverston when we do the next play zone. Um, the local schools will be able to participate in the in the final design work uh, and scoping of that scheme as well. Anything else you want to add to that, Councillor Dinser? Just to say. Uh, yeah. Local communities, young people in particular, are really important in getting that um, feedback to make sure that the facilities we create are fit for purpose and actually um, engage with people. So local communities, local groups, everybody will be involved in, in the work to actually identify people who could benefit, whether it would be at schools or other community groups that are in the, in the area who are maybe uh, wanting to organise activities, and we want to make sure that they have access to these uh, new facilities, whether it's Normanton Park, Alberston, or future parks where we have play zones. Thank you, Councillor Dinsey. Um, yeah, thank, thank you, Sam. Yeah, thank you for clarifying. Okay. Cheers. Okay, item 12, um, exclusion of the press and public. 
Cabinet, please can we consider the resolution to exclude the press and public during the consideration uh, of the remaining items of today's agenda uh, as printed there. All those in favour? Thank you. That